tuned into my weekly talk radio TV show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced and get happy with Dr. Marissa. And this show is about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal. (laughs) Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. So I have shows and topics. Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Thursday, Friday, happy days. Monday, Tuesday, happy days. Wednesday, Thursday, happy days. Friday, whatever, happy days. What Friday. a day. Na, 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 na. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Best known as the mom from Happy Days. And she is a delightful 89 year young Marion Ross to my studio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dr. Marissa, <laughs> this is such a treat for me. Oh. My goodness, you're a wonderment. Which is exactly the kind of guest that I like. Those who have gone through life, good and bad, and then taken those experiences to alchemize them into the person they are now and doing good on the planet. I'd like you to welcome Corey Feldman. If you're grateful for it and you say right away, thank you, God. Oh, my God, it's so beautiful. I'm so blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then guess what? More good things will come to you. Does this sound familiar at all? She's back again to mark my Cancer Awareness and Prevention Month show. Please welcome Fran Drescher. Hi, I've Fran. And supporting Cancer Schmanz. I really yeah. appreciate it. So what would you say are some of the biggest myths, Fran, that people have about cancer? Well, I would say that they think that there's a cure for it. <laughs> okay. Instead of a cause for it. is the first call-in show when I get to be Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And uh, people call in to get their life tires balanced and their critical thinking or their BS, their belief systems, smog checked. And today I am delighted to have Malie calling in from Birmingham, Alabama. We could go 90 days and end up having terrible sex. And then you say, well, the relationship's not all about sex. Well, if I'm not getting great sex from you, then I'm going to get it from somebody else. Right? That moose just got put on the table. (laughs) 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 And I see Josh and... Jim, I have to agree you're with both nodding, mm-hmm. nodding, nodding. Ramon's sort of half nodding because his wife's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... I understood what was going to happen if I, Muhammad Ali's youngest daughter, made public that I was going to become a boxer. Mm-hmm. So I, I wanted to make sure this was the path that I wanted to go down. You are absolutely fabulous, beautiful inside and out. And I'm giving you Dr. Mercer's beneficial presence on the Planet Award today. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. When I go, I'm gone. Are you lonely? No. No. I knew that was going to be But I I surround myself with people. I mean, I'm always the one cooking for things. I'm always the one that decorates first and come to my house. All the orphans, they'd have no place. I'm going to have no place to go. Okay, okay, come on over. (laughs) Life is so amazing if we can see it. 
jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome, you're tuned in to Take My Advice on Not Using It. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, NBC News, CNBC News, and NBC Sports Radio Station, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeart Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Audible, Amazon Music, TV Live, Rumble, Podchaser, Spreaker, Streaker, you name it. I'm there because I want to maximize my splatter zone and how you can be happy 88% of the time. So there's no gossip, no scandal, no keywords on this show, no Kanye talk, formerly or now. Instead, I want you to figure out how you can choose to be happy. So I have topics and guests to that end, including, as you saw in the eight-year promo, even though I'm now 11 and a half years in, next week will be 600 consecutive weeks on the air. So I'm really glad that the people who said a show about hope and happiness without all that negative stuff would not last. Uh, if you missed any of my past classic TV guests, as you saw in the promo, I had Don Most Ralph Mouth on again for the third time last week. Go vote for him. He's up. Uh, if you're a Grammy nominating member, he's up on the ballot for a possible nomination as well as go to Heritage Chart and vote for him there. He's uh, trending up the charts in the UK with uh, New York High is his album and new song. So that is the caliber of people that I had. Thanks to, and I know that Michael is not um, uh, uh, going to be the exception to the role. We all love Harlan Ball. He is the publicist extraordinaire. He is responsible for a lot of my favorite guests according to y'all and today is no exception we have a third generation psychic medium magician mentalist he does it all and the most important thing he has my favorite kind of chin please welcome to my studio i'll give him a more formal uh introduction later but uh please welcome right now michael Gutenblatt. <laughs> How did I do with that uh, promotion? <laughs> that was great. I do want to. I do want to make one tiny little adjustment. I'm not a yes. medium. I don't talk to the dead. Uh, oh, I don't communicate okay. with the dead. But everything else, A plus. All right, perfect. Yes, I'm not. Uh, that is not my expertise in that field or area. So thank you for the correction. And as I said, I will give you a more formal. He's he's. He's quite the accomplished guy. So I'm so happy to have you in studio. And we're going to tell you about, I don't know if there's spots left to actually see you when you're taping. A few. We'll like a few, maybe. We'll, we'll offer them as Asian Oprah giveaways. But uh, the way that I love to start my shows this past year is to have breakfast with my guests, taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich. So eight specific Real quick, one word gratitudes on the top of the button. And then on the bottom of the button, what do we like about ourselves? And the reason why we're doing this is because of all the attention to mental health. And I believe that before you reach for the pill or a pill or whatever it is that you want to numb you out with, if you start with gratitude and you find what's good about you, you may not need all that side effect stuff. So that's what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to start real quick. I am grateful for sunshine. I'm grateful for people because that's how I learn. Mm, grateful for um, butt chins. <laughs> well, then I'm grateful for sushi. <laughs> <laughs> ah, grateful for laughter. I'm, great. I'm grateful for wonder. Mm. And I'm going to go to my cashew gallery because I have I, I have a very fabulous support group here on the chat. If you're driving your car, listening to AM FM, number one talk in the IE on this show, 
please do not type in your gratitude. Wait till Safety you first. <laughs> yes, but uh, we do have Orville Nation tuning in from Spain and Troy tuning in from Chicago, I believe. And uh, Troy is thankful for peace and grateful for love. So uh, welcome in Caption Gallery. That cleans up our eight top of the button. Let's go to the bottom of the button. What do you like about yourself, um, uh, Michael? I like that I am able to continue to grow to become the best person I want to be. Yeah, now you know why he's my guest. I just have the best <laughs> line alive, even though I don't do pre interviews, so it's always a, a, a surprise, a nice surprise. And we got a finger on that one, by the way. If you come to comment in my YouTube TV channel studio, you get to also give me the finger, which is not that finger, but the finger. All right. So we got one of those. I appreciate that I am funny. What do you appreciate? I appreciate. Going back to something I said a moment ago, that I'm able to continue to wonder, that I'm able to experience wonder. You like that? <laughs> and actually, correction, he's not in Spain. He's in Portugal. Oh. So even kind of cool. Um, I appreciate that I am imperfectly perfect. I appreciate that I have great intuition mm. and instinct and that I, and, and that I've learned to listen to it. Mm, I like that. That's a new one. I appreciate that I am observant. Last one. I appreciate that I say yes more than I say no. Uh, another good one. You guys, they, they're loving your answers. We're getting more and more eyeballs in the studio. Welcome to Take My Advice. I am not using a gift balance with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KCAA, station that leaves no listener behind. AM 1050, FM 106.5, NBC News Radio, and home to the Asian Oprah. And we're just finishing up our gratitude sandwich. Uh, Troy appreciates that he can read a room. Well, <laughs> you're right in line with our guests this morning. That serves and, you well uh, in life. <laughs> Everyone at this red light is listening to you, Dr. Marissa. That's so sweet. All righty, here we go. Let me pull up. Oh, thank you all for joining us for breakfast. And I am. Uh... <laughs> and uh, we really are blessed this morning to have another wonderful um, guest. Thanks to Harlan Ball. And let me just read you a little bit about him in his bio. Uh, he's a third generation psychic, over 23 years of professional experience in the world of entertainment, a world-class mentalist. He knows how to engage and captivate the most sophisticated and hardest to please audiences. He can be seen reading minds, there you go, Troy, and performing his amazing feat of, oh boy, prestigious how was that? At that was a, a plus. Oh, thank you. At private clubs, corporate events, meetings, galas, and private events around the world. Michael has been a feature performer at the world famous Magic Castle in Hollywood, Hollywood, and has residency at Six Flags Magic Mountain, advised film, TV, theater, and theme park productions as a magic and psychic. Uh, consultant received rave reviews for his one man off Broadway show, Extraordinary Deceptions. He's a proud member of the Psychic Entertainers Association and a performing member of the Academy of Magical Arts at the Magic Castle. A selection of his various awards and accolades include Best Club Entertainment by Boardroom Magazine, Top Corporate Entertainer by, oh, there's a little typo in this. Or no, no, it's not. Corgentum Boardroom Magazine. No, Corgentum Survey. Winner of the LA Award for Best Psychic Container. Named the best thing to do by Times Out New York and praised by the New York Times, LA Times, Variety, and the Washington Post. I told you there's a lot there that he is known for. Please welcome, formally, to the studio, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
What an intro. I got to live up to it now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So uh, uh, now I'm going to ask you the way that I like to uh, have my guests introduce themselves. Okay, hold on right here. We've got some applause here. And we have a new streamer streaming in from Africa. So you're getting an international reception this morning. I love it. Uh, from Rwanda, and uh, John Baptiste does great work with a past guest of mine uh, who had his arms chopped off but, uh, in the Rwandan genocide. He was a guest on my show, Frederick, and so they're doing work rehabilitating folks who uh, lost things during that genocide. So it's I'm always nice to see you, Frederick. All right, so I don't have an answering machine. I have a questioning sheet. And when you call me, it says, who are you and what do you want? So, Michael, who are you and what do you want? I think that's the best way to start any interview. Uh, so, I'm Michael Gutenplan. I am a third generation psychic. My father and my grandfather believe in ESP. We don't talk to the dead. Uh, we don't do anything that we would really consider a power. What we do is we trust our instinct and intuition, and it's a muscle. And we work it to the point where it looks like a power. It looks amazing, but it's no different than you or I. We just trust it. And I believe truly that we, you, me, whether in Rwanda or in the Inland Valley or in Hollywood, California, we are more alike than we are different. And I can use that to create experiences that seem like magic, that seem like psychic powers, but it really is the real deal. And the reason it's real is it's because in that secret that you and I are much more alike than we are different. What do I want? I want people to understand that they are much more powerful than they believe they are, to experience that power and it really does come from your, your motto, don't die wondering. My job, my living is to give you an hour of wonder where you don't wonder like in a magic show, how did he or she do that? You wonder, how did I achieve that? I being you in the audience. My show is about you. I'm the conduit to making it happen. I guide you down this path. But in a psychic show, you are the star. And uh, I love giving people a memory that they will take with them for the rest of their lives. Mm, wow. Now that, that is a, a very different answer than I usually get. I've had several magicians and mentalists actually on the show. Uh, and I, I had a brief encounter dating uh, David Copperfield. Oh my goodness. A long time ago, a, a different lifetime ago when he was first starting out and I was modeling in Toronto. So that's how that happened. But that's another story. I did have to sign something. So, so you know, <laughs> the level of that because, uh, you know, you can't give away secrets and things that you, that you know. So, so, whoops, sorry. Is, uh, they always say a great way to start a relationship is please sign this NDA. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, uh, I am, I'm getting a question out here yeah. that uh, he, ha he hasn't covered Orville. So it's, it's a great question because I actually was thinking about that too, because I have been told that I am an empath. I'm told that I'm ultra sensitive. Mm -hmm. I'm told that I'm, audio clarient so i hear things and i also agree with you uh that i believe everybody has that ability to um plug into the field of energy that is inspiration innovation creativity that is available to all of us but we don't grow up believing or being taught that so we think that you know it's a special just like singers or you know artists it's a special gene but uh i'm gonna, you, I'm gonna hey. jump in there for a quick second before we get to yeah. troy's question but what you just said is we don't listen to it we we are actually it's not that we're taught to listen to it 
we're taught to actively not listen to that gut instinct. We are taught to listen to our parents. We're taught to listen to our teachers, our bosses, our, our religious leaders. And we are taught over and over and over again at a young age, don't trust yourself, trust the people above you. And what happens is young people, children who don't get that education, if you'll call it that, move forward and they're so successful with their energy and their, their emotions. And what we find is um, when you get into the psychic world, and I'll talk a little bit with Troy's question once or a lot of what I'm about to say, but when we get into the psychic world, what we find are people who have been taught by their parents to trust their instincts, trust their intuition. You still listen to people, but when your gut says something and you go with it, as opposed to listening to everybody around you saying, ah, that's stupid, Don't do what I tell you to do. Those people tend to be more successful, maybe not financially, maybe not in business, but emotionally and in their own lives. They live a happier, more fulfilled lives because they trust themselves. And that's all that psychic work is. All it means to be psychic is to get to the point where you trust yourself enough that you are more right than you are wrong. It's never perfect, it's not guaranteed, but it is a power and it is a muscle and it's a muscle that you have to use and work on to grow it. So it sounds like you were one of those children as a third generation that was taught that you did have this power or ability. How did that, when did you first discover that uh, maybe you were growing up a little differently than other people and not told, you know, listen to your parents or else. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was always, I was always a good kid, but I was always trying to make money or, or do a business or something. Uh, I sold sodas when I was a kid, sodas and candy. And it was one of those things where, uh, you know, why aren't you playing baseball? Why aren't you doing this? This is what a kid should be doing. You shouldn't be running a business in seventh grade. Uh, I didn't listen to that. I moved forward and I was lucky enough to have a family structure where uh, they encouraged me to go with my gut, to go with my instincts. And from that early age, I trusted myself and I moved forward with it. It becomes a bit of a problem though when you enter the workforce, because then you have a lot of self-confidence. You say, I know what I'm talking about. Well, most people don't feel that way. So I entered, I had a lot of jobs where I was told to sit down, answer the phone, do what, do what you're being paid for. We're not paying you to, to, to take advantage of the situation and do whatever. And unfortunately, uh, that doesn't sit well with someone like me. That, that is not how it works. So my instinct and intuition had to, had to adjust. I had to learn, someone said earlier, read the room. I had to learn how to read the room. I had to mm. learn how to say, ooh, now is not the time. Now is the time to sit back, go with my gut, but silently or after work. Uh, there are two more elements, and this answers, I think his name was Troy's question, which is, I, I think as I became an adult, so we're talking uh, after high school, I started to learn more about emotions and, and be an empath and, and read other people's signs. And uh, that came later. And I do think that comes later in life. We, we experience it as a young person, but it's really uh, in your 20s. Uh, there's a, there's a, a nerve that goes from the tip of your head to your stomach. Uh, and as you grow, it forms. This is a medical thing. This is not psychic work. And around 25 in men a little earlier for women is when that nerve fully forms and what it is it is your gut reaction it's why you it's 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 using past experiences to dictate your current reactions it's why when you're 25 you stop paying a surcharge on uh, rental insurance it's you have matured in a in a physiological sense and you're giving me, <laughs> she's like, I'm a doctor. I don't know about this. Uh, yeah, this is a real thing. This is a real thing. What, and is, a what is a rental insurance? You stop. So when you money. rent it, when you rent a car, uh, if you're under 25, you pay more. Oh. Uh, and the reason, the reason you do is at 25, give or take, it's not an exact moment, but at 25, your body starts using past experiences to dictate 
present and future reactions. So when you're a kid, you're, you're doing, you're, you see an open road and you go, I can hit 120 miles an hour. I'm going to do it. Then you're about 25, 26, 27. You go, you know what? There might be a police officer there. Uh, and that's, and that's a real thing. So I do think, uh, I, among other people learn about ourselves as we get older. And, uh, I said this in our gratitude, we, we have a choice. We can change and adapt and become the best version of ourselves by using our experiences, or we can ignore it and say, this is who I am. Leave me alone. I also had a very interesting, in, uh, I don't know if incidents, the right word. When I was 18 years old, I had viral myocarditis. Uh, it's an inflammation of the heart. Mm. Normally you have to get a heart transplant or you die. Uh, they incubated me. I was in an induced coma for two weeks and they told my mother to make funeral arrangements, that there was no hope. And she got in the bed and she held me and she said, nope, he's not done yet. And I came out of that with no damage. Nothing was wrong with me other than I was very weak. And I think that is where I really started to communicate with what I would call the universe. And, the, and what I mean by that is it was the first time I saw un, the universe presenting signs to me that I moved forward with. And sometimes we need a, a smack in the face. Sometimes we need a little punch in the gut to say, hey, somebody's trying to tell you something and this somebody is a universal being. So I think growing up, I had the advantage of having a family that said, go with your gut. Growing up outside of my formative years, learning to trust myself, learning to understand empathy and other people around me's energy and absorbing that. Uh, and then at 18, having that pivotal moment where the universe said, everything happens for a reason. And I'm going to put up, the universe is going to put doors in front of me and the universe is going to knock. And it is my job to open that door and say, come in. Thank you, Orville. So it's actually a true story. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm blessed that I don't need to make these things up. <laughs> I, have a, I have a grandfather, you know, and a father who think they're psychic. I, I have this, uh, you know, thank goodness I have no damage. So it is a touching and good story. It has a good outcome. Yeah. So there's so many places I want to go now. Um, uh, when you say this universe, um, how does God, as people say God, uh, figure into that? And I am not religious. I'm actually allergic to religion. Just to give you my background, um, I kind of bristle sometimes. I was brought up fundamental Baptist, which is a precursor maybe to agnosticism. <laughs> but, uh, and I have a beautiful relationship. I call my God my UPS man, my universal power source. It delivers every morning when I pray and meditate. So I am with you on the universe. I, I prefer not to put labels or, or terms to it, but whatever anybody else wants to call it, it's fine with me. It's your, it's your prerogative, but um, just place that for me, like, and, and maybe how you got to that universe. Yeah. So I would never, I think it's important. You, you just said something very important, which is I would never take away someone's belief. Um, I, I live in a world of skeptics. I live in a world of people who say, this isn't real, this isn't real, this isn't real. I think it's really offensive to say to someone, your belief, whatever that is, is wrong. Uh, I may disagree with it. I may roll my eyes at it and say, oh, where did they come up with this one? But I would never say to you, give me a break. Uh, so anybody who's listening, this is my belief, but I do not challenge yours. I, I applaud your belief. And I'm actually a little envious of someone that has blind faith. I wish I had that. Uh, I am not a God person. I am not someone who believes there's an all powerful being that made everything with a snap of a finger or whatever appendage they have. I am a universe person. I believe that there are other things out there. There are other levels of spirituality and the way, the best way I can describe it is the hummingbird. The hummingbird does not see what you see. Still has eyes, but the hummingbird sees millions of more colors than we are able to see. So if a bird is able to see the world in a completely different way with different levels and wavelengths, who am I to say that there's nothing else out there on this world, let alone the universe? Mm -hmm. I just don't think our brains are at a point where we are aware of everything that's going around. I'm looking out my window right now. I see the Hollywood sign. There are trillions at this point 
of radio waves and electric waves and things going through the sky that I can't see. I have no idea how it works. To me, this is magic. Mm -hmm. They're there and I can't see them, but they are clearly, you and I are talking. I am talking into headphones that are not connected to any, you know, this is a science level. Science can explain it, but they can't explain why I can't see that wavelength. Can a, can a hummingbird, can a, a fly? Mm -hmm. So I believe that there is stuff out there we just don't know. Yeah. And, and I trust that on one of those main things is the universe. It's a generic term. It doesn't necessarily mean anything in specific, but I do believe that the universe gives us signs. The universe gives each of us, there's infinite time and space. So why can't we all have our little universal protector? Yes, uh, yes. And, and if you open your heart and you open your, uh, Open your heart. Thank you. The, Troy Troy's having flashbacks of being a, a, a small boy in Catholic school with he's getting his hand hit by the nun's ruler. Uh, if you have if you open up your heart, um, you know, there's no reason you can't experience the universe presenting options. I do think that religion does at times play a good place in setting up boundaries for people. Some people really need that. Mm -hmm. They really need a leader. Um, I think, unfortunately, uh, the people that sometimes, not all of them, but there are a lot of people that get called to leadership positions in a church because of the power, mm -hmm. um, because it's, you don't question your religious leaders. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that's very attractive to a certain type of person. So yeah. I would never challenge someone's belief. I may challenge their leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do, I do believe the fundamentals of all religions tend to be the same. And it's love thy neighbor, be a good person, uh, you know, help others when you can, uh, and just be grateful, be grateful. Yeah. You know, we, I think a lot of people say, be great. You know, I, uh, thank God for this. And I think because they, they find it so hard to believe that, Maybe the universe just gave this to them because they're them. They have to give that thank you to someone. Uh, it's a humbling thing, religion. Right, right, right. Uh, Absolutely. I'm not the most humble person, but, you know, I am <laughs> thankful. Yes, which is great. If you've just tuned in, you're listening to Take My Advice on I'm Not Using a Get Balance with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back in two and two with Michael Gutenplan, who is a magician mentalist. And we're getting a little deep. We're going to come back and uh, he's going to give me some examples of signs from the universe that led him where he's going. We'll be right back. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome to Balanced Tai Chi Gong. My name is Dr. Marissa Pei. For the next 28 minutes, we will be slow dancing with the universe in a moving meditation that promotes inner peace, one breath at a time. Just follow the sound of my voice and move with me as I guide you through this ancient wisdom through new thought practice. As a corporate psychologist, I created this practice in response to my life and those of my clients. We were professional, high achievement oriented, multitasking control freaks and exhausted. No matter how many successes, it was never enough. That coupled with a painful life experience led me on a quest to find another way to live and back to my Chinese roots. If you practice regularly, I can promise you that it will impact all health vortexes body, mind, spirit, soul, you will be in a place of balance and inner peace the way we were created. Xie xie. Be my partner, dance with me.
Take Back Your Life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome back. You're tuned in to Take My Advice on I'm Not Using a Kid Balance with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KZAA, NBC News Radio, AM 1050, FM 106.5, home to the Asian Oprah, streaming everywhere, but central. Please do free subscribe on my YouTube channel. It's a TV channel because you get to watch and listen. And there you can chat, like my cashew gallery is active this morning, headed up by my co-captains, Orville Nation and <laughs> Troy, who are uh, monitoring you and asking great questions of my guest today. His name is Michael Gutenplan. He is a third generation psychic and master mentalist. He will be taping live at the Magic Castle November the 8th, I believe it is. And uh, as an Asian Oprah giveaway, we have a couple of spots still left open. If you would like to be part of that audience, as I will be, to, <clears throat> excuse me, experience the magic and mentalism of Michael, please do go to drmarissa.life, put in magic, in the subject line, and then you will be able to uh, sign up the first, however many spots we have left by the time I get to Harlan, and he hopefully won't kill me because I didn't ask him about this beforehand. But I also wanted to invite you to my once a month, this will be the last actually class of balanced Tai Chi Go on the beach every last Saturday, but this will be the last one. I'm going to go back on book tour with my number one bestseller next year. So come to the beach this Saturday. Friday night is my last get happy hour, a free uh, happiness coaching session. So please do join me there. DrMarissa.life has all of that information. Michael, what are some of those signs that you got to tell you that, you know what? You're a third generation. It's coming out now. And uh, you are uh, destined to help people recognize how special they are and their abilities to be empaths and uh, to to read or follow their gut, I think is how you said it. I, th I think one of the biggest signs was fighting the universe. So when I moved, I lived, I grew up in New York and I had a great life in New York. Uh, I went to boarding school. I went to college in Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon, and moved to New York. And I, you know, was doing mind reading and magic shows off Broadway. I, I worked at MSNBC for a year. I worked at, uh, as the world turns, the soap opera. And, and I just had this really amazing time. And I moved to Los Angeles to have this career in television. And at every step of the way, I kept getting these signs from the universe saying, hey, this is not what's right for you. And I kept saying, no, 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 this is what I want. This is what I was meant to do. And, you know, you would go from job to job. You'd stay at a place for a couple of years. And I only really had one, I, I, had, I had a boss. I, his name was Daniel Soyseth. And then it became Gary Shapiro and they championed me. And, and uh, Gary had a great line, which was, uh, I would pitch a TV show idea and he would say, nah, I don't think so. And I can't wait for you to prove me wrong. Other than that, for 15 years, other than those two people, it was always a fight. It was always being told, nah, I don't think so. And then a few months later, you would see another person make this show idea and you go, why didn't anybody listen to me? Mm. And we we are presented with these moments where Again, I trust my instinct. I trust my intuition. I go, I'm, I'm right. I'm not, I don't have a big ego. It's not a big head. It's not self-assurance. It's just, you got to go with what you know. And what I think it was, looking back, it was the universe putting up these blocks going, what are you doing? Go do this entertainment thing. Go be a, you know, a magical mentalist star. And it wasn't until kind of the final experience where I said, I got to take a break from this TV thing. I'm going to go do magic. And that's when I started doing magic shows. And we do have the Magic Castle in LA and we have the world's greatest magicians in a, you know, 20 mile radius. I can't compete with that. I can't make a living 
saying, book me when you have 40 other people going, no, 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 book me, book me. And I looked at the marketplace and I said, what should I do? And I called my grandfather who does magic. And that's when my grandfather said, now is the time to do the mind reading show. You're a psychic. I'm a psychic. Your father's a psychic. Go, go do this. It's the right time. And boy, was he right. Uh, it, I should have seen it years before, but I wasn't mm -hmm. ready. And I think the thing we look back and we, we kind of get down on ourselves when we look back and go, oh, I should have done that 10 years ago. I wasn't ready. I would not have been as successful as I am right now if I had done it 10 years in advance. Uh, I remember being, I was, I was just getting into, uh, I'll answer that in a question, Orville, great question. I remember being a kid in a magic shop. Uh, I was probably 19, 20 years old. And I said, uh, it was in New York City, Tannen's Magic, and a guy named Tony was owning it and running it. And I said, I want to do mind reading. And he goes, nobody wants their mind read by a 20-year-old or 18-year-old kid. Do it when, you're, when you have gravitas, when you have life experience. It will make it more real. Um, and I discovered the truth. I always say the truth in the lie. That's what makes mentalism good. Mm. Uh, there, is, there is a trick to make it work. Because you're coming up on stage. My job is to make you successful. Can you read my right. mind now? I can. We can, really? we can try We can try an experiment. And, and this will answer the question that was just, just asked. Do I do things similar to Darren Brown? Yes. Yes, yeah. I do exactly uh, what Darren does. Um, we do a lot of similar things. I think Darren is probably the best mind reader in the world. I have a deck wow. of cards right here. And the reason I use cards is not because it's a magical thing. Uh, but because it's, it gives you a limited selection okay. uh, and this isn't, this is not guaranteed to work. Okay? okay. Um, but I think I'll get close. I think I'll get close within a number or two. Uh, I have one card for those listening right now. I have one card sticking up and boy, I hope this works. I want you to clear your mind, Marissa. Uh, Dr. Marissa, take a deep breath in and just think of the first card that comes to mind. Not the ace of spades. Think of the first card that comes to mind. You got one in your mind already, don't you? It came right, your eyes opened up. And I saw it. Uh, now, where did you grow up? Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Oh, my goodness. We're going international. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stick with two cards. Okay. I think it might be this one, but this is the one I think it is. What is the card you were thinking of? Eight of hearts. Eight of hearts. So I, I took out one at the beginning, and I said, I think you were going to think of this. And it happened to be the... Uh, the seven of hearts. That was the one that I had done. I'm going to take out the one that I had stuck up at the beginning. Remember I said it's going to be one or the other. And what did I do at the beginning? I fanned the cards and I stuck this one up. And the reason I moved the seven of hearts to the front, I wasn't sure if you were going to say seven because seven's a lucky number in Asian culture. But the one that I did pick up happened to be the eight of hearts. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> and it's intuition. It's instinct. I looked at you. I said, okay, she grew up in Canada. Uh, she's of Asian descent. I think it's going to be a heart. Uh, you're a heart person. Everything about you is love. So it was guaranteed to be one of the hearts. Um, diamonds would have been too materialistic. I thought it might be seven. That's why I moved it to the front of the deck. But the reason I picked up the eight is because it's a nice round number. It's even. It, it has a little bit more wholesomeness. And it's right in the middle. You're a person who's right in the middle. So we talk about the artifice. We talk about the rouge of making it work. When I do my show, as incredible as it is, I am hoping everything we are doing in that show is real. The predictions are real. The mind reading is real. I will always have that secret magic piece in my pocket to use if I need it to make you look good. Nobody will ever look like a fool in my show. That mm. is not allowed. You come up on my stage, you are a coast, a co-star. You are, you should never leave a show feeling embarrassed. It's uncomfortable to be on stage. You can feel uncomfortable in life. But you should never feel down. You should never feel embarrassed. When you go to a show like mine, a mind reading show, you should walk out of there going, not how did Michael do it or how did she do it. You should walk out of there going, how did I do it? Uh, it's about you. It's about your experience. I call it unlocking your psychic potential. So you're actually a motivational mentalist. 
I'm going to now. Oh, I like, I'm writing that down. I better I know, right? trademark it that soon goal. before you do. <laughs> there is the goal right there because you've got a career as a motivational speaker that does mentalism and magic, which is unusual. Just like I speak, I'm a motivational speaker who sings sometimes on stage, which is a little bit different. Uh, it, so, so definitely that's an extra superpower that you have. Now, your grandfather and your father were psychics. Did they actually make a living out of being a psychic or they were just uh, uh, like able to when uh, when you went out and they asked you, where did you go last night? And you lied, they'd say, <laughs> okay, come on, tell me the truth. I know exactly where you were and that kind of psychic. Yeah. Uh, so we are intuitives. Uh, like I said, we don't talk to the dead or anything like that. I do think that's important to say. My grandfather actually ran, uh, owned and ran a, a very successful chain of audio video stores in the New York region from the 1960s all the way to the late 90s. Uh, he would say that his success is due in part to his ESP. He listened to his instincts. He knew exactly what to do. Uh, he had a place in Brooklyn called Stereo Warehouse, and you would walk in and there would be boxes of TVs, you know, all up and down. And you would walk in and go, boy, this guy's got a lot of inventory. And he'd say, I have so much inventory. I need to sell it all. Take it, take it. Well, they were empty boxes. They, you know, he was, he was putting on a show, but his instinct taught him to listen to himself. And he said, if people come in and they see too much stock, they're going to think they're getting a good deal. And they were, they were getting a good deal. Uh, but he trusted his instinct. He trusted his intuition. So he, we, they, my father and my grandfather definitely didn't do shows. My grandfather did magic tricks. He was an amateur magician. Still is. Saw him at 96 years old. Saw him last week in New York City. I was there for a show. 96. But uh, 96, a spry 96. He, he, um, doing you know, shows. I speak to him every week. No, no, no. He's not doing shows. He's not doing oh. shows. He's retired, <laughs> living his best life ever. Uh, but he would do magic tricks and stuff. And he still, I will say, he still does magic tricks for his friends and, and at dinners and stuff. But, you know, he, he is uh, a believer. He believes in aliens. He believes in psychic powers. Uh, but at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is he trusts himself. And he has, pe people say he's, you know, you've got a big ego. I don't have a big ego. I just trust myself. I love who I am. Uh, mm -hmm. I move forward with my thoughts. Uh, I don't challenge myself at every turn. I speak everything I say, whether it's a question, an answer, a, a suggestion, or a thought. I speak with assurance. I let you believe that this is the most important thing I'm saying and that I believe it and that I've thought this for years, even if I'm coming up with it in the moment. And I think if more people did that, uh, the world would be more confusing. But it makes you powerful when you speak with uh, authority on whatever you're speaking on. Mm -hmm. uh, someone, someone just asked a question. It popped up and then it came down. Do I do remote viewing? Can I share an experience? No. And it's actually very interesting. I'm a member of the Psychic Entertainers Association and the U.S. government uh, had a program about remote viewing. It was an actual what is remote viewing. Remote viewing is I'm sitting at my desk. I go into a trance and I can transport myself somewhere else and actually be in that other place. Uh, if you have watched, uh, what's the show about the, uh, the kids, uh, you don't have a TV, uh, the Netflix show, stranger things, uh, oh, yes. re remote viewing is a major part of that where the, the girl with psychic powers does remote. View. You enter yeah. into a zone and you can see and hear things. Well, that's based on a real thing. Uh, project Starlink. Uh, it was a real thing. And at our last psychics convention, we actually did a interview with uh, remote viewer number one. And he told us some of the successes. Uh, I don't know if I buy it. I don't, I don't know if that's something uh, based on how this guy was saying it and kind of the additional information we were able to get, uh, you know, there, there were a couple of holes in the story there that I went, wait a minute. You know, that's I'm the sorry, other thing is. I got to point out the irony here for a second, because it, it's just, I don't know if you're getting a cash gallery, but a mentalist who is doing things that are sort of fantastical is a little skeptical of someone else doing remote view. I, I think it's, well, I think it's great. Right. I mean, it, it's a funny thing. I'm having a funny moment. Here's Sorry. why. And, and I, and I, and I think that's a great, we're going to segue into this one because we talked about okay. religion earlier. 
And I think any sort of extremist is going to usurp the conversation about the generalist. So if you talk about growing up Christian fundamentalist or a Baptist or, or a Scientologist or whatever, and you start talking about these extreme, crazy beliefs that people have, cult-like, we now are looking from the top down. We're looking at the most extreme version and applying that to all levels down the line. So if you talk about a psychic and you say this psychic, they're using crystals to cure cancer and they're remote viewing and, and, and people are going to give me a break. And I'm saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm using psychology. I'm using my belief that we are all more alike than we are not. I'm using assumptions. I'm also using manipulation. I'm on a stage where I can adjust you in a certain way without you realizing it. Uh, I'm not holding a crystal and saying the world is at peace. Uh, I, I do believe crystals have energy. They power radios. They have a wavelength. But I'm not saying it's going to cure cancer. So what happens is people think of the most extreme version of something and apply it to all levels down the line. And what I'm saying is, wait a minute. There's different levels. You can be uh, a good, I I am not, but I'm going to use this as an example. You can be a good Christian. Love thy neighbor, love everyone. We open our doors to everyone. Live your life as you live it. I'm just going to take the be kind to thy neighbor portion and I'm going to be a good person. That doesn't mean you go into a, uh, you are going to hell Bible bashing church. Correct. In my opinion, good for you. You found a version of this thing that you like and you made it work for you. This other version, I think got it wrong, but I'm not going to, that's their belief. Right. Right. I think I, I, I will open my ears to all forms. I'm, and we'll talk about mediums in a second, but I yeah, open my, my ears to all yeah. forms of psychic stuff. But I also go like, okay, get w- one moment here. So I was, I, I don't believe in mediums. I have seen a ghost. I have experienced communication with spiritual elements, but I find it so difficult to believe that I went into your little studio, your parlor, I gave you $20 and all of a sudden you connected with my grandpa. And my grandpa only came across the divide because I gave you $20. Uh, I find that super hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, It it sounds a little scammy on paper. Is that, is that why you corrected me at the beginning? Oh, a hundred percent. I don't talk to the, now at the end of my shows and we will, let's find a little time to talk about my show, but at the end of my shows, people, people talk, people talk to me at the end of the shows. And a lot of times they'll say, are you a medium? No, I'm not a medium. Well, let me tell you about my experience. Their experience is real. They will say this person did something. They said something. There's no way they could have known. I am not challenging your experience. All I am saying is there are different levels. And my advice to anybody listening right now is if you're wondering if the psychic or the medium or whoever you're going to is real, the the kind of red flag I would look for is are they telling you you need to come back? If you are going, if you are going for closure, I consider that for entertainment purposes, right? You're going in for closure. Uh, I went into the psychic. They told me mom and dad are okay in heaven. Great. If the psychic or the medium says to you, and now you need to come back and bring a thousand dollars and we're going to get rid of this evil curse that you have, uh, run, run. Uh, you can choose to go back. You can choose to go back and talk to other dead people. That's your choice. Right, uh, right. But as long as it's your choice, as long as you're not going down the rabbit hole of being taken advantage of, some people use uh, therapy or, or psychic connections in lieu of therapy. So my only advice is if there's a requirement to come back to, to live your best life, don't come back. Go find another psychic if that's what you're looking for. That's so I'm great. doing a show at the Magic Castle. It is on November 8th. It is not in association with the Magic Castle. I am renting it. I'm investing in my business. I needed better material uh, to send out for promotional reasons. So I am renting the theater. I am inviting about 120 people to sit in my audience and see a show because I realized something interesting. 
I could not afford to be in my own audience. My, my, my clients are the top 1% of 1% private clubs, CEOs, royalty, oligarchs, and really rich people. And I don't want that anymore. I want to share this gift with everybody. So I'm creating all new marketing material. And I said, you know what? I live in LA. I might as well invite anybody who wants to experience the world's greatest mind reading show to a special performance. So we are filming it at the Magic Castle. Uh, audience arrivals around 10 30, 11 a.m. It's a 90 minute show on November 8th. Uh, please, you can email Dr. Marissa. You can also email me. Uh, go to my website, mentalist.show, www.mentalist.show. Is, is that, that is what you are on right right now. And oh, there's a contact form on the bottom and you could just send me an email there. You can also go on Instagram or any social media platform and type in amazing mentalist. Amazing mentalist, easy to remember. But if you don't remember that, type in amazing men. I come up first. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and just send me a private message on any social media platform and I'll send you all the info for the show. But it you know, you got to, if you believe in yourself, you got to invest in yourself. So I am putting a tremendous amount of money into my business to get it to look and feel as good as it already is. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm very excited about going to be in your. I'm so office. excited to have you there. We're going to unlock your psychic potential, Dr. Marissa. Woo! Well, I, I am, I've been told I'm audio clarion because I hear, um, this show started because 4.30 in the morning, I was woken up with the word radio in my ear. So that is that the universe. Was, that is your is psychic like, power. Yes. And I'm like, radio, can we talk about this later too? It's 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> but I got the same voice that actually told me to write as a result of losing a $200,000 consulting project. So I, I am all 100,000% behind you. I believe that there's access to a friendly universe that I'm really glad that we share that connection for yes. sure. We're coming back on the very end of the show. I'm getting the, the signal that I have <laughs> two minutes. So two minutes left. please do go. Um, Amazing Men is the easiest way to find my very special guest today, Michael Gutenplan, who has not only proven to me that he has access because he guessed my card on the deck. Uh, and I'm so happy that we got to enjoy you. Uh, this interview flew by is what Orville Nation is saying. Great guest. So you got the approval. Do you have a YouTube channel? I do. It's also an amazing mentalist. I don't post as much as I should, but you know, we're working on that. I'm, I'm getting, you know, reminders to post little videos that I can take into yeah. the show. So I'll post something this afternoon for you guys. Yeah. And no more shitting on yourself. Yeah. I heard should from you twice. So no shoulds. So no shoulds Juice. Because you're doing everything beautifully. And I'm so glad that I got to meet you. And uh, look forward to November 8th. Go to drmarissa.life if you would like to sign up that way or Amazing Men. And uh, thank you so much. Thank for you, Dr. Here. Marissa. And um, uh, tune in tomorrow. We have my very special series, Doctors in the House with Dr. Tiffany Tate and I. And the topic, well, you're just going to have to wait and see. It's always a good topic. <laughs> I didn't have it up, but I am so delighted that you're here. I do this at the end of every show. Can you do this with me? It's all about balance, peace in, which you actually figured out. Peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace. Now go and have the best day ever. We'll see Amen you tomorrow. To